Tough back on. Phone call to SFD Fire Investigator Captain John Corbett Fu. English US QWERTY shown. Showing Samsung keyboard. Call notes. Editing phone call to SFD Fire Investigator Captain John Corbett Fu subject. Sometimes fire is accidental nine period. And sometimes it's intentional. Arson is the crime of maliciously and intentionally or recklessly starting a fire or causing an explosion. Promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all and build effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. Compassion and a strong moral compass is essential to every democratic society. Yet persecution, injustice and abuse still runs rampant PM and is tearing at the very fabric of civilization. We must ensure that we have strong institutions, global standards of justice and a commitment to peace everywhere. I discovered this following news story simply by Google 107 Grave Street, Syracuse, New York 13203, House Fire, January 10, 2023. Syracuse firefighters extinguish Northside Fire. Published on January 10, 2023. Syracuse and why on January 10, 2023, at 6.23 a.m. Syracuse firefighters were alerted by the 911 center to a heavy smoke condition in the area of Highland SD near Graves SD firefighters from Station 9 Short Ave. And Station 2 Lodi SD arrived in the area under four minutes. Arriving companies were met with a heavy smoke condition in the street and set work finding the source of the smoke. Within moments, 107 Graves Street was identified as the fire building. Smoke was seen coming from the eaves of the roof as well as the attic windows. I picked up on the above last year words of that online story written by a Sir Doc of news editor who must have been on the scene themselves personally or took that statement from someone who witnessed the fire as IT burned before the Syracuse Fire Department put out the fire so IT was not the firefighters who opened the windows. IT was January 10th th in the middle of winter so why were the attic windows all open prior to the fire? I later on the following day while at my property boarding up the entire first floor windows and doors of the house recorded one of the individuals who I believe started the fire talking and soliquity knowing some details about the fact of why wasn't their glass blown out into pieces if there was such a big explosion. He mentioned an explosion, and also insurance fraud. IT was as if he was attempting in some futile way to try to place blame accusing the fire being intentionally started for an insurance fraud claim speaking like as if he knew some secret inside information about me being behind starting the fire for an insurance claim. The last thing of extreme importance of self daming disclosure of his involvement in being a pyromaniac staying across the street just far enough away to be not recognized by the fire department firefighters when they arrived to start fighting the fire that he started. He even mentioned that just when he seen the lights of the fire trucks arriving on the scene and he felt like here we go again, I am going to have to save someone again. Depending on the venue and reason, and with proper permits, it's not illegal to set a fire to your own property, but it is illegal when it's to commit fraud. And it's illegal for others to set fire or destroy your property. I did not set fire to my own property nor did I conspire with anyone to set fire to my property, however my property had a fire on January 10, 2023 in the, the attic sometime around 6.23 am according to various online news reports but sir.gov Syracuse firefighters extinguished Northside fire states as seen in the above sir.gov online news article. Smoke was seen coming from the eaves of the roof as well as the attic windows. This is odd to me that smoke was seen coming from open attic windows when I have never opened any of the attic windows ever, and they were closed prior to the fire. Yet this article is a piece of evidence now for an arson fire because all the windows in the attic were discovered by me to have been painstakingly removed and were placed next to each window opening after the, the authorities refused my request to investigate this house fire as an arson due to the fact that I didn't have an active a current fire insurance policy. I also discovered my stolen Milwaukee flashlight that had my name engraved on IT up melted into the ashes as left intentionally to have evidence of my belongings up in the attic. I believe in an attempt to frame me for insurance fraud claim if I did actually had purchased my fire insurance like I told Christopher Gall that I was doing so I could sell my property. That God that I didn't buy that insurance policy because I now believe that I did have been arrested for insurance fraud given all of the police misconduct that occurred since I didn't have fire insurance. Just imagine what would have happened if I had a fire insurance policy and tried to file a plan for something that I didn't do. FYI have been arrested three times since trying to report Christopher Gall's crimes to the police and see something, say something, just imagine if I had made a fire insurance policy claim after seeing all the evidence in this YouTube video. So I looked up the following online search. Wikipedia. Search. Detection of fire accelerants. Article top. Detection of fire accelerants is the process that a fire investigator uses to determine if fire accelerants were used at a fire scene. This process involves a combination of both field work and laboratory analysis by fire investigators and chemists. In order for a positive identification of a fire accelerant to occur, both field work and laboratory analysis must take place. This is because when a fire accelerant is used, only ignitable liquid residues, ELRS, remain at the scene. It is the chemist's job to identify these ELRS and the investigator's job to determine if they were used as fire accelerants or just present at the scene under normal circumstances. An ongoing partnership with NICHE to increase knowledge and awareness of fire and explosion scene investigation. I anticipate that this type of mutually beneficial partnership between the Syracuse Fire Department the criminal justice system and private industry will become even more prevalent in the future. As the authors of the guide indicate the field of fire and explosion, investigation lacks nationally coordinated investigative protocols. This means what IT means and IT means that if the city of Syracuse SFD fear wants to do a half done US Department of Justice Office of Justice programs procedures and policy making wasn't followed as my recorded phone call with SFD Captain Fire Investigator Corbett shows they made wrong decisions about the source of ignition being an accidental fire caused by existing wire failure after 108 years being fire free from existing wire failure issues. 
never having a fire caused by original existing electrical wire failures until Allstate EKAO Surin Grimes was told not to be on the property anymore according to a recorded phone conversation with Onondaga ADA Shea Malloy shows. HTTPS colon slash slash udu dot BE slash H size sock 6 PG. That Allstate EKAO Surin Grimes had a court ordered full stay away order of protection to NOTBN or near the property where Ryan McDonald resides, so why was there an accidental fire caused determinated after Allstate and his friend were reported by numerous different people to me after I arrived on the scene after being called to come to the scene by SPD POC Sile who seemed to be the commanding police officer on the scene. The phone call that I. The attic after being removed from the property by my second floor tenant Ryan McDonald when the court ordered full stay away order of protection wasn't followed or even the judge's rule not upkept by the SBD who knew on many different occasions that Allstate was inside the property and in direct contact with Ryan McDonald even assaulting him on one of the subsequent days following the fire that he started to most likely in my opinion was attempting to murder Ryan McDonald because Ryan was scheduled to testify against him in court for his crimes committed against Ryan and right after being released on his own. Recognizance Allstate aka Osir and Grimes was welcomed into the property by Christopher Gall after Christopher Gall had Stephen Kostrick removed from the apartment as his tenant he rented to Stephen who Christopher knew that Stephen wouldn't allow for their criminally conspired plans to burn my house down after Stephen questioned Christopher as to WH why he was now allowing Allstate into the property after Christopher never wanted him inside the property before as known thief knowing he had intentions to steal from HM despite the fact that he had him going out committing burger lies in the neighborhood for anything of value that Allstate could get for Christopher which he would pay him with drugs which is how he had accumulated his apartment full of stolen merchandise as the SBD knew about which can wrong about being accidental or intentionally started then they can five period just look at my case here five exclamation mark no protocols according to the dodge niche the niche research report fire and arson scene evidence a guide for public safety personnel wasn't followed because sfd captain fire investigator said one there was an investigation if there was an investigation done then that means it was done and the investigation is over this means that the investigation is completed if the investigation is as completed and there have been no arrests made, then the SFD FU must have concluded that it was an accidental fire. This is odd to me because I am not even a certified fire investigator and I discovered that this is logically a arson fire fire as well as documenting physical evidence that shows that it is an arson fire fire. Two, the fire investigator had already come and gone before I arrived. If the fire investigator had already come and gone before I arrived, then the investigation wasn't properly investigated. The only step correctly followed according to the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs. Fire Investigation Guideline was the first step because a trained fire investigator was notified and responded to my fire which was a serious fire. The fact that the fire was a possible arson fire was absolutely true because I reported that IT was a possible arson fire to SBD POC Sile in my return phone call back to HIM when he notified me that my property had a fire. I told SBD POC Sile that I wanted the fire investigated for arson. 3. This is the first time hearing about your evidence. Not true. Both authorities refused to accept my evidence 6 6 times. 4. Any information that you have we definitely accept. Not true. They refused to accept my request for the fire to be investigated as an arson fire. The SBD and SFD also refused to accept any of my evidence which I attempted to give to both authorities six six times. I reported that Christopher Gall solicited me for a false insurance claim six six different times. One on the phone call to SBD POC Sile before I arrived. Two on scene to SBD POC Sile three on scene with my father Richard Thomas to SFD fire inspector Robert Thompson four on scene to three three SBD detectives who ignored me despite me asking for their business cards which they claimed they didn't have so I asked their names and I was given a bullshit name. I gave them my cell phone number verbally and wrote down my cell phone number on 33 separate pieces of paper and handed IT to each of the 33 SBD detectives and told them that Christopher Gall set my house on fire after he had already solicited me for a false insurance claim fire. These SBD detectives knew exactly who Christopher Gall was because they supposedly arrested him for possession of stolen property and illegal serious high power assault guns which in my phone call to SBD POC Sile before I arrived on scene he asked me if I knew that his apartment was full of stolen property which I said to the POC Sile that he selected me for arson and a false insurance claim that I was evicting him for non-payment of rent that he was committing neighbor burger lies paying drug addicts drugs in exchange for stolen property which the apartment was full of stolen property. That he was renting out bedrooms to drug addicts homeless people in exchange for them bringing him stolen property and that he had illegal handguns and serious high power assault rifles. I informed the commanding officer on the scene that I had already reported these crimes that Christopher was committing to. An interview with the person who is most familiar with the area of Origins pre-fire layout is a recommended preliminary step to prepare for an origin and cause examination along with construction of a detailed map of the suspected area of origin and showing the room shape, windows and doors and major appliances, contents or furniture. After reviewing the role in the investigation of fire and explosion scenes through the establishment of the National Center for Forensic Science, NCFS, the National Institute of Justice, NIDGE, has helped produce the NIDGE research. Report fire and arson scene evidence, a guide for public safety. Personnel has protocols that were not. 107 Grave Street, Syracuse, NY13203. In my deduction from evidence I recorded from the origin of the fire witness statements, recordings of conversations of persons of interest, behavior of first responders at the scene recorded phone call conversations with SPD police officers, recorded phone caller and conversations with SFD personnel and fire investigation unit fire investigators, conversations with my parents who are retired news reporters and real estate agents, recorded phone conversations with public insurance adjusters, recorded ABC television show, Seattle Fire Department Fire Investigation Unit. Recorded phone call conversation with Sue at the Red Cross Disaster Relief Program. Gave a myriad concluding factors that this house fire was not properly investigated for arson. Therefore, seven period.
recognizes the need for this coordination. The center maintains and updates its training criteria and tools so that it may serve as a national resource for public safety personnel who may encounter a fire or expel minus. Science seen in the line of duty. I'll encourage interested and concerned public safety personnel to use fire. And arson scene evidence. A guide for public safety personnel. The procedures recommended in the guide can help to ensure that more investigations are successfully concluded through the proper identifica minus collection and examination of all relevant forensic evidence. Upon my independent personal arson fire fire investigation right pointing magnifying glass four period with likewise conclusion from ANY professional certified fire investigator licensed by the state of New York six period. I am seeking an arson arrest to be made in my investigation of what I have concluded to be a criminally conspired, coerced, designed, premeditated, intentionally set fire with intent to purposely cause harm or injury to others by intentionally setting fire to my property that I own at 107 Grave Street, Syracuse, NY 13203. My investigation includes fires and explosions. Having extensive experience in intentionally creating confined set fire fires as an Eagle Scout determining the cause will move quickly through the process toward recovery. Time is valuable in recovering evidence, and I take this very seriously. I moved quickly but deliberately to determine why this event occurred. Investigating fires calls for careful analysis and handling of evidence. As a self-trained investigator, I am prepared to educate law enforcement agencies, district attorney, prosecutors, news media, news reporters, judges, attorneys, jury members as to how I investigated the house house building fire fire at my property. With over four months of experience, I know that time and careful exploration is key to finding evidence and the details are what matter most. Unlike the botched, improper, insufficient, incomplete, wrong fire investigation and by someone who I believe it is, this investigation has retired since my house building fire fire. The origin and cause of the fire is often key to recovery. Whether it's assigning responsibility to individuals, identifying faulty construction or wiring, or finding the accidental cause, I can trace evidence back to provide an account of what happened and why the event occurred thanks to my Samsung Galaxy S flagship series cell phones using the Android operating system and Google which values my privacy and security. I can go back and easily my daily research history and recorded evidence. Determining the cause of the fire or explosion is the first step to rebuilding my live and suing for the intentional destruction of my property property and if the local authorities were involved in spoliation of my evidence then doesn't winking face that show that they could have been aware or even behind the setting of my house fire for entrapment into a crime that I didn't commit if I'd had fire insurance just imagine that I'd probably be in jail awaiting a sentence for insurance fraud in an arson fire of my property gap this evidence shows I was getting framed into committing when I'm innocent and would not have been able to prove this case and inform you that this arsonist being involved in at least five other arson fires all of which no one has been held accountable despite witnesses seeing all state setting these fires which they told me about these other addresses. 1 E. Laura Street, 2 Newell Ave, 3 Molly Mansion, Westcott and Genesee SD a property sadly next door to the fire station lit up in front of 4 eyewitnesses, 4 Josephine Street, 5 Mildred Ave. The common denominator in all of these locations is they were occupied properties in which Allstate was kicked out of these addresses for stealing from the people who lived there only for him to retaliate for being kicked out and then to light them up for exclamation mark fire only to return to loot them after they were boarded up and condemned where the people can't return to get any property left behind after they are vulnerable. Same as what happened in my property at 107 Graves except for the difference in my house fire one of the arsonists was allowed back inside the property by SPD because the arsonist seemed to be the police's confidential informants and not punished for harming me, someone who has been victimized by police misconduct for many years now where I'm able to show that it's a pattern or practice used against me. Yes. This is a bold statement, but my evidence proves otherwise. From what their narrative says. I say all of these recent fires fire are all arson fires and no one has been held accountable except for me being punished for not having fire insurance but then again just imagine what would have happened to me if I did have fire insurance and made a claim for something with evidence that shows police misconduct. This call confirms that my property's house fire at 107 Grave Street on January 10, 2023 wasn't properly investigated for my concerns of arson motives identified by me and my numerous complaints that I made with SPD and SFD commanding POC style fire inspector Robert Thompson and that my parents Richard and Karen Thomas personally made in a scheduled sit-down meeting at SFD fire station 12 on January 10th. 2023 requesting fire fire investigation unit view complete a fire investigation thereby giving preliminary information about my initial concerns about who i had believed started the fire in my property to fire investigator captain john corbett fire investigator lt alan williams according to newton's third law of motion action reaction states if you're not going to do a proper fire investigation then i am going to do a proper fire investigation for you if i had a bought fire insurance policy something that i told my tenant christopher gall that i was going to do so that i could list my property for sale might not have been a good thing once again, looking at this scenario in Newton's third law of motion for every action, there is an equal reaction thus states that since I didn't have insurance, therefore the SPD refused to arrest anyone due to that reaction. Then if I did have insurance, then the reaction from the SPD would have been to arrest someone. Combined with the police misconduct, given what SFD captain said, it didn't make sense what I said, how I now feel that if I had actually had fire insurance at the time of the fire, then the reaction of the SPD would have been to arrest someone and that someone would have been me according to having the action of police misconduct against me. If there was no police misconduct against me, then the reaction of the SPD would have been to arrest the arsonist since in this scenario of me actually having police misconduct being actually true as I state tar, it's true that Newton's law of motion is accurate when applied to this current scenario since I asked for an arson investigation and didn't get one, then it's true that there is police misconduct and the same can be said that with having police misconduct and I didn't currently have fire insurance, then it's true that the police misconduct used against me is the fact that the SPD hasn't arrested anyone and that is just as this current scenario is accurate because of the fact that the SPD hasn't arrested anyone.
Thus I'm asking for a fire investigation from a natural party that has no ill will towards me so the result of this fire investigation being accurate that it was an intentional set fire which I proved it is accurate then a concurrence from a natural party not against me will result in the outcome of the arsonist actually being arrested, which is what I want, will prove that Newton's laws of motion and physics of life is accurate to the world that we live in. This is due to the judges and attorneys who also have close ties to the police as I have come to the conclusion that since our last mayor Stephanie Minor is an attorney and has a very close friendship with unscrupulous judge Joe Fain who retired a year early knowing that the then mayor was going to hire him for her last year in office needing the protection of judicial powers. In effect, when Mayor Stephanie Minor hired Judge Joe Fain in 2017 for her eighth year in office, she defeated TH whole idea of the separation of powers in government. Checks and balances is the only protection we have as Americans wishing to enjoy our civil rights granted to us at birth being born in TH United States of America having rights afforded to us written in the Constitution in particular our right to vote therefore keeping control over checks and balances from corrupt actors such as Mayor Stephanie Minor by her actions of hiring a member of the judicial branch of government into the executive branch of government did away with the legislative branch of government by her control over the police hiring her chief of police Frank Fowler who was a puppet played by her not enforcing the legislative laws that we citizens have voice in making and maintaining in our assembly and senate. I realize the situation inferring the pain coming from lack of control over my life when being victimized by retaliation coming from our elected leaders and their appointed officials in local government when the mayor seen who I was in a news story that she was not happy with the situation that I was unfortunately involved in because of association. My mother and father have often unfairly blamed me for the way my life has changed for the worse blaming the tragic events that keep happening to me as of recent on my choice of friends and associates. This upsets me being beyond belief and I'll explain why five period. It is not always by my choices who I associate with and really don't have any true friends since my best friend died on me leaving me to fight against evil by myself and since I am single I also do don't have that friend who should be your better half and helps you by looking out for your best interest protecting you along the way. I guess that is the reason why I am still single because friendship is a two-way street and I have only met greedy ungrateful users who take advantage over my kindness as a weakness but it's my personality to not be compromised of judgmentation from the beginning of a relationship because I just don't put up walls and block people out not trusting anyone up front but I take the approach of the decision that I make about someone by letting their actions show me who they truly are and if I then need to permanently delete them out of my life. The unfortunate thing about this is that I often get burnt just like what happened to my house but this is because of something about our society that needs to change which is the authoritative use of confidential informants in our judicial system that encourages lying, stealing, untruthfulness and pretty much everything about laws that we need to hold true that and honor that is broken by the overuse of these confidential informants in our country. I know this for a fact because of the amount of confidential informants who have been placed purposely into my life infiltrating my circle of associates as I don't have friends for the reasons I just explained. However, these confidential informants have been intentionally put into my life by the people who I have stated have had the interest to hurt me who are the people in our local elected leaders and their appointed officials in government, in particular the former mayor Stephanie Minor and her mayor's office appointees and employees who have directly focused in on me and my life to harm me by changing my life for the worse by changing the positive things that I've worked my whole life to achieve and taking things away one by one until now when I'm almost left with nothing by their influence and penniless. In fact, less than penniless because I'm now in substantial debt because of what they have done to me and my losses of my life when just 10 years ago. I was on top of the world and in control over my life compared to today and what has changed. The focused attack from the mayor's office which has seen to it to strip everything away from me one by one as a punishment form of retaliation that had its beginnings from the turning point when I tried to sue the mayor's office and police misconduct was thus used against me because the abuse of powers of our local government having no checks and balances because of the lack of having a separation of powers created by Mayor Stephanie Minor when she was allowed to hire Judge Joe Fain as her corporation counsel attorney to protect her in her elected office which due to her corruption was able to spend time focused in on hurting me was the most outrageous abuse of power from someone who instead of helping members of our city, instead hurt me and took away the things that I worked a whole life to achieve culminating to the premeditated design destruction of my property used in a way to hurt me. By lighting it on fire fire in a manner to continue to punish me for exercising my constitutional rights of free speech and filing my first police misconduct complaint about the deletion of the body camera footage because I choose to support my brother on the news exercising my first amendment rights of free speech led to my punishment of retaliation and then discrimination used against me for looking falsely upon me by the mayor's office as being a criminal after they falsely accused me which they did and to discriminate against me for my familial ties to my relationship with my brother has led to unequal treatment under the law as a punishment which was the illegal breaching of my contract which I was fired as a punishment when the mayor's office lied about my not having provided liability insurance declaration pages when my insurance company actually did and I had them provide me with a written statement of this fact that they did then when I did try to sue the city of Syracuse which I did when I had hired James Megasto ESQ. The resulting scene row was the city of Syracuse not having checks and balances due to the lack of oversight from not having the separation of powers of having all three branches of government in the mayor's last year in office which is what was the case because having control over the judicial branch of government by the hiring of her friend Judge Joe Fain is how they illegally denied my rights to be able to sue them because they just didn't want me to be able to sue them by encouraging their friend who was my attorney James Megasto to intentionally not file my notice of claim purposely letting my statute of limitations expire is exactly what happened when my attorney engaged in legal malpractice breaking my attorney client privileges which he did do when communicating with city hall that i intended to sue them by actually truly telling them that which did happen after i had paid him my retainer fee subsequently never filing my notice of claim which i hired him to do when i paid him my retainer fee then after paying him my retainer he communicated with city hall telling them my intent to sue 
which he did admit to doing by sending them a letter which he admitted to doing instead of what I paid him to do which was to sue them which he didn't do by not filing my notice of claim shows my point of this scenario deliberately denied my rights to sue the mayor's office because they told my attorney that they didn't want to be sued having no checks and balances having control over all three branches of government being able to engage in telling my attorney to protect them instead of protecting me as they were better friends and since my attorney had that conflict of interest never should have talking my case in the first empty place because now it makes sense that four days after I paid him my retainer fee by cutting him a check which he deposited and two days after he deposited my check because it cleared my bank account and two exact days following that I had a copy of a letter that he wrote to City Hall I which he wrote about the fact that I retained him and he thus requested all information pertaining to my award of my contract and copies of my winning contract which they breached intentionally illegally claiming I didn't have insurance when I did have insurance and my insurance company sent me a letter stating that they provided the city of Syracuse all required requested insurance documentation in a timely manner now does it make sense that two days later after my attorney wrote letter to the city instead of writing a letter to my insurance company which he didn't do because I had to do it that I got beaten up by two SBDPO William Coleman and his partner P.O. Fitzgerald who was wearing one of the 16 Dodge FBI pilot program police body cameras falsely arresting claim that I fleed when I had nowhere to flee to because I was already inside my own property and they were two then thus in their police reports justified use of hard hand contact with me because they stated that I attempted to flee gave them the right to beat me up slamming my head repeatedly into my house while handcuffing me using an armor to walk me to the backseat of their police car then they recovered my cell phone which recorded the entire incident they then both stood in front of the cop car that I was handcuffed in the backseat of while they both went into my cell phone they did watch the video that it recorded of them beating me up then deleted it then after I filled my police misconduct complaint directly with the department and the CRB requesting the body camera footage it makes sense why they all deleted it on me instead of providing it to me which the written procedure said they would do and they didn't all of this make sense having control over all three branches of government and denying me my civil rights was easy with no accountability thus denying me all my rights one by one incident after incident of police misconduct time after time continuously happening again and again needs to stop seven exclamation mark here are some facts i did then after my police misconduct complaints philly directly with the spd and crb i was then retaliated against with my residents getting raided by the police using a unconstitutional no-knock search warrant signed on october 17th 2017 on that day barely able to walk with two swollen feet badly infected with a colored issues infection from road rash from intentionally being hit with a motor vehicle off my motorcycle by a Peter Leon confidential informant friend of confidential informant friend Philip Bova whose confidential friend Mike Delaney who I discovered is the nephew of Judge Joe Fain who I discovered bringing an over RX 100 methadone pill pills into my home which if the police discovered them inside my home during the unconstitutional no knock search warrant police raid that then happened October 23rd instead of the planned October 17th 2017 while on the news being recorded during Mayor Stephanie Miner's new soccer field dedication ceremony speech but did happen because I left my house moments before the police raid was scheduled to take place because I didn't feel safe having to leave my house for over a week knowing that I was going to be needed to be admitted into the hospital for life-saving IV antibiotics I left on a drop of a dime to go to Fraud and Lock Co to buy a safe because I didn't feel safe leaving my house with all the new friends that I didn't know trying to come over who I now know were active confidential informants trying to get me to stay in my, my house so the police could raid it with me being there. When at Fraud and Lock Co, I used $2,600 cash from a $7,000 check that was from the return of my security deposit for my breached contract that the city returned back to me. The warrant didn't get to be actually served until after I was released from being admitted to the hospital with life-threatening colitis infection needing a week's worth of life-saving IV antibiotics from getting assaulted three weeks prior by a different judge Leon's nephew and had the original confidential informant riding in the vehicle that intentionally hit me off of my motorcycle on September 29, 2017 which since I didn't get killed from that assault with a moto vehicle they tried to silence me by trying to frame me as a drug trafficker when Mike Delaney, the nephew of Judge Joe Fain, was used as an active confidential informant planting over 100 methadone pills inside of my house right before the raid did happen just hours after I was released from being discharged from a week inside the hospital I returned home where I discovered all of these methadone pills planted inside of my house which I flushed to dispose of them because I had a feeling that the police were going to raid my house after 10 people showed up to help carry the 2,600 pounds gun safe that I bought before I was admitted to the hospital on October 17th. 2017 the police then raided my house on October 23, 2017 an hour after these people who I didn't know as they were the original active confidential informants friends who the police hired these people to carry my safe inside for me I couldn't even hardly walk being in so much pain with swollen feet from the motorcycle accident I couldn't carry a safe inside hoping that I'd put cash methadone pills guns inside the gun safe but I didn't because when they opened it during the police raid it was empty I was then blackmailed with felony possession of marijuana and unlawful grow of marijuana misdemeanor and CPCS 7th misdemeanor because I had a half a Xanax pill and one methadone pill they found on me while I was being blackmailed with those criminal charges written onto an appearance ticket under the last name Thompson, not my actual last name Thomas, the police raided my house again for the third time in my life on March 2nd. 2018 arresting me for unlawful growth marijuana for the third time in my life at the same property at 221 Grumbach Avenue the first raid of my property arresting me for unlawful growth marijuana I think in 2012 when Mayor Stephanie Miner was first in office I don't think that she likes me I was maliciously prosecuted for the third arrest of unlawful growth marijuana while still being blackmailed with felony criminal charges having a corrupt court appointed attorney Robert Reversky who convinced me to take a plea acceptance of AD in front of a judge Derek Thomas which later showed I has a criminal record having pled guilty to the unlawful grow of marijuana having now for the first time in my life having a criminal record the 2012 arrest charge of unlawful grow of marijuana I paid a private attorney who had the charge dismissed I need the help of my federal government against the local and even state government agents who at this point need to be criminal liable I truly need the help of the FBI to investigate into my claims of corruption and abuse of power of our local elected leaders and their appointed officials so to see that my claims and allegations are not simply a over imagination making up stories blaming others for the way my life has turned out 
but I guarantee you that their investigation into every aspect of everything that I claim to have taken place since that pivot point of the mayor's decision to punish me for something that I never did actually do and as a matter of fact didn't even know about it taking place until the consequences of the actions that were chosen to punish me took place from people who had no right to do so and only were able to inflict their punishment onto me was through an abuse of power resulting from lack of oversight having no checks and balances because of the combination of powers breaking our cherished freedoms we are born with destroying my rights as an American when denying my constitutional rights because of having control over each branch of government is hard to see when and how I just explained that the mayor made up her own laws denying the purpose of having the separation of legislative branch of government and taking it upon herself to punish me without due process by acting as the judicial branch of government from her supposed role of a manager a clear violation of the municipal home rule law. This would not have hurt without having my police body camera footage. The SPD didn't investigate my police misconduct complaint and when I mistakenly believed that I was safe filing a misconduct complaint with the Citizens Review Board I in hindsight today discovered that it's a City Review Board CRB because the Mayor Stephanie Miner hired one of her City Hall staff Reinette Ralliford to be the new administrator at the CRB who will oversee my police misconduct complaint and dismiss it without any findings of misconduct. Well just to let you know that the cost of my civil rights is what paid for the department-wide Dodge FBI federal grant money payment for every police officer to be wearing a body camera today because if it was discovered how the policies and procedures were broken destroying my police body camera footage of my false arrest as SBDPO William Coleman's arriving on the scene partner SBDPO Fitzgerald was wearing one of the 16 Dodge FBI pilot program police body cameras then violating the written procedures the SBD was supposed to follow. The city of Syracuse would have lost the federal FBI grant money for the issuance of the department-wide police body cameras. That is what led to my unconstitutional no-knock search warrant police raid of my residence on October 23, 2017, which I was blackmailed with felony arrest charges held over my head for over eight months to remain silent about this corruption while the perfect player Mayor Stephanie Minor ran for governor of New York State against Mario Cuomo while publicly calling out his corruption while in office, yet I was being blackmailed so no one knew about her corruption in office. Thank God that she lost the race for governor. Just imagine what would have happened to me if so. I guarantee 100 point symbol percent that it'd still be locked up in state prison somewhere today ironically enough that i didn't have a police criminal record prior to my loss of my breached one dollar slash two million dollar public works contract in 2017 which i lost my business my civil rights all my savings my benchmarks and good reputation in this city almost was assassinated with the failed plan of mayor stephanie minor to be personally responsible for my police raid arrest to be live reported by sir.com news cameras who were on scene of a dedication speech ceremony of a soccer field built across the street from my house in the background of where she was standing at a podium with news cameras recording while the police search warrant squad was set up in the vacant house next to mine which was taken over from the bank by the mayor's land bank program on october 17 2017 same day that unconstitutional no knock search warrant was signed to be issued by a judge that same morning Thank God that I foiled the mayor's plan to have my police raid arrest recorded by the news media presence for her dedication ceremony speech of a soccer field built in Schiller Park because I had to be admitted to the hospital for life-saving IV antibiotics from a life-threatening colitis to chew skin infection sustained from being assaulted by a different judge Leon's nephew who intentionally purposely hit me striking me down off my racing motorcycle motorcycle with his car before fleeing the scene almost killing me. But luckily didn't and luckily this bold statement that in making looking back in hindsight that the mayor Stephanie Minor and her judge friend Judge Joe Fain tried to first kill me having me intentionally hit off my motorcycle would be just a claim made by me if not combined together with this story and luckily by chance thank God that this is a story with video evidence that everything that I claim to be true is very much so true as I value honesty and respect as an Eagle Boy Scout with heroism award being given to me by the Boy Scouts of America and a good former mayor Roy Burnow but I wasn't afforded on knowing that I had to leave my house for well over a week W maybe they couldn't force me out so they burned me out. Yes five period that's a bold acquisition. Thank God that I hadn't yet had actually ended up purchasing my insurance policy. This is the information that I inferred deducting it from the conversation that I had with fire investigator Captain Corbett and the public insurance adjuster Joe Wyzecki with the Nealon Group is that I have been targeted and discriminated against for various types of reasons including lack of proper arson investigations therefore denied me constitutional rights as an American citizen where I am supposed to have equal protection under the law and guaranteeing protection of my property from deliberate destruction from anyone wishing to harm me such as what just happened with purpose intentionally. Setting fire to my property and not receiving NY 14 Amendment rights of equal protection under the law and providing me a proper fire investigation thereby engaging in color of law violations discriminating against me for not carrying a fire insurance policy amongst other reasons thus allowing me to fit and meet all provisions and factors requirements to file a section 1983 civil rights lawsuit for color of law violations denying me equal protection under the law. I am suing the SPD, SFD mayor's office amongst countless other government employers for what I can NW prove as a pattern or practice for violating my constitutional rights for redress and compensatory plus punitive damages and filing for an injunction asking for this conduct to stop and compensating me for all my losses as a victim suffering property damages, income loss, emotional distress and anguish PTSD. Aids used for detecting accelerants. At fire scenes. By Tony Cafe. First printed in Firepoint magazine December 1993, Australian Fire Investigators Association. Introduction. Recently some members of the NSW chapter of the EAA witnessed demonstrations of AIDS which could be used to assist an investigator at the fire scene select samples for later laboratory analysis. A sniffer dog trained to detect accelerants was demonstrated, as well as a portable gas chromatograph. The use of various AIDS and techniques to detect accelerants at fire scenes has attracted controversy during the previous 10 years. The much maligned sniffer has suffered continual criticism, yet the offer has found it to be invaluable on some occasions. The use of physical indicators such as floor burn through to indicate the presence of accelerants continues to be debated in court. Experts using this sort of evidence without the support of positive laboratory evidence are often heard resorting to hyperbole and analogy to support their case, which usually ends in indignation. 
The fact is these techniques are solely used as aids to detect the presence of accelerants and samples should be submitted to the laboratory for confirmation of the presence and identification of the accelerant. The aim of this article is to discuss the properties of accelerants and to give an overview and evaluation of the various techniques which can be used to assist the investigator sample debris at the fire scene. As the topic is regularly debated at seminars, views opposite to those in this article will inevitably surface. I'm sure readers would enjoy hearing these views in future issues of Firepoint. The Common Accelerants The most commonly used accelerants are petrol, kerosene, mineral terps and diesel. These accelerants are generally complex mixtures of hydrocarbon molecules. These hydrocarbons have similar chemical properties, however their boiling points vary and cover a wide range of values. This variation causes the accelerants to alter their composition during the evaporation process. The more volatile hydrocarbons evaporate at a faster rate leaving the heavier hydrocarbons in the debris and after a period of time the accelerant becomes less volatile and less abundant. During the evaporation process the headspace above the accelerant becomes concentrated with the more volatile hydrocarbons and so has a different composition than the accelerant left in the debris it is this headspace which is tested by the various techniques to detect the presence of an accelerant amongst the debris. Heavy accelerants such as diesel or accelerant residues which are heavily evaporated will be difficult to detect as they provide little vapor in the headspace. Accelerants trapped under compacted soil and debris will also be difficult to detect so the debris must be disturbed or a very sensitive technique used. If the detection technique is too sensitive, then hydrocarbons from a material such as rubber-backed carpet could be detected and wrongly interpreted as indicating the presence of an accelerant. Most of the volatile hydrocarbons found in the headspace of the common accelerants are also found in the headspace above most burnt plastics and synthetics but accelerant hydrocarbons are found in different ratios. A chromatographic fingerprint prepared in the laboratory must be used to determine if the hydrocarbons came from an accelerant. The extraction technique used in the laboratory to prepare 6R23 sample for chromatographic analysis also relies on sampling and concentrating the headspace above the debris. During the extraction process it is important to recover as much of the heavier components of the accelerant as possible to avoid analytical discrimination. Extraction techniques such as purge and trap, which rely on a modified version of steam distillation give the least amount of discrimination. Methylated spirits and acetone are also used as accelerants however they differ from the common accelerants as they are water-soluble and composed of essentially a single compound. Being water-soluble, they are frequently washed from the fire scene by the firefighting operations. They are also common pyrolysis products so their presence in debris must be quantitatively assessed. The techniques used for detecting accelerants are outlined below and discussed. The techniques are listed according to the author's opinion of their degree of usage and relative merit. 1. Physical indicators. Physical indicators are listed first as they prove the accelerant was present at the time of the fire and was not placed there after the fire was extinguished. Investigators armed with even the most sophisticated hydrocarbon detector should not overlook the physical evidence. Physical indicators used to detect the presence of accelerants are localized burn patterns to floors and surfaces and overhead damage inconsistent with the naturally available fuel. Reports from firefighters or eyewitnesses of a rapid fire or of suspicious odors can also indicate the presence of an accelerant. These physical indicators, if initially present, can often be destroyed during the course of the fire. If the roof or ceiling has collapsed then evidence such as localized burn patterns on the floor can be concealed. The investigator should excavate the debris around doorways or in the center of open spaces as these are areas where accelerants are normally used. If a wooden floor is involved, the investigator can hit the floor with a shovel and excavate the areas where the floor appears weakened. Physical evidence which indicates a hot and intense fire such as a color change or spalling in concrete, did aluminium and deformation of steel are unreliable indicators of the presence of an accelerant, as the temperature reached during the course of a fire is governed by the amount of both fuel and oxygen available. Many combustible materials tend to burn with the same intensity as accelerants, given an appropriate supply of oxygen. 2. Use of one sense of smell. The human sense of smell can quite correctly identify the presence of accelerants, even in trace amounts. This ability varies amongst investigators as the sense of smell is like most other senses and can become highly developed through experience, or it can become impaired both temporarily or permanently. When one smells fire debris, they are actually sampling the headspace above the debris and noting the chemical fingerprint of the headspace. Then using one's discriminatory powers by comparing the fingerprint with those stored in one's memory, a decision can be made as to the possible presence of an accelerant. Wine tasters use a similar technique, and their highly developed sense of smell can detect extremely minute variations in the chemical fingerprint of a wine amongst